Welcome to Traveler's Tales. I am your host, Greg Alonzo. Today I will be your guide through history as we take a look at Part 3 of Atlantis, The Lost Continent. Before we begin, just a quick reminder that we post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday with special editions on Thursdays. Moving right along, mythology tells us one thing, while archaeology tells us another. Can Atlantis be found in the Caribbean Sea? Perhaps it was once located in Spain, maybe Africa, or even the Greek island of Santorini. Today we will answer these questions as we take a look at the fabled lost continent that has caused so much debate throughout the ages. Since Ignatius Donnelly's book, Atlantis, the Antediluvian World, there have been dozens of proposed sites for the fabled lost continent. Unfortunately, Atlantis has become divorced from the specifics of Plato's account. This is reflected in the fact that many of the proposed sites are not within the Atlantic at all. Few today are scholarly or archaeological hypotheses, while even the psychic Edgar Cayce envisioned Atlantis to be in the Caribbean Sea. Many of the proposed sites share some of the characteristics of the Atlantis story, but none has demonstrated to be a true historical Atlantis. Most of the historically proposed locations are in or near the Mediterranean Sea, in such islands as Sardinia, Crete, Santorini, Sicily, Cyprus, and Malta have all been proposed. With regard to the Thera eruption, which is today's Greek island of Santorini, a huge tsunami that some hypothesized destroyed the Minoan civilization, including Crete, was the inspiration for Atlantis. Another proposed site is the Laconian Gulf. The mountains on either side were called the Pillars of Heracles. This is the southernmost gulf in Greece, and it opens up onto the Mediterranean Sea. The Thera eruption also devastated this area. Let's not forget the Black Sea. Proposed sites in this area include Crimea, Bosphorus, and Ancoma, a legendary place near Trabzon. Then there are the island-based cities or states such as Troy, Tartessos, Tantalus, Israel, and Northwest Africa. The Rikot structure is a prominent circular geographical feature in Sahara's Adrar Plateau. It is an eroded geological dome exposing sedimentary rock in layers which appear as concentric rings. However, Atlantis is steep in mythology. Legend has it that the fable city was built by the god of the sea, Poseidon. Why and for what purpose? According to the tale, Poseidon fell in love with a mortal. Her name was Clito. In order to protect her, he built a great city high atop a hill and on an isolated island. When he finished his task, he named the island Atlantis. According to myth, Atlantis was the largest island in the world and it was inhabited by the most beautiful and intelligent people. Poseidon took care in the construction of Atlantis. He saw to it that the city was surrounded by rings of water that connected to tunnels that led to the ocean. The walls were built with red, white, and black rock and decorated with precious metals. In part, Poseidon did in fact make his city beautiful yet he sought to imprison the Lady Clito. Sadly, he did not trust her loyalty, and he sought to imprison her within the elaborate construction. Let's take a look at the location of Atlantis. The great city was said to have been larger than Libya and Asia Minor combined, and existed beyond the Pillars of Heracles. The location of Atlantis in the Atlantic Ocean has a certain appeal given the closely related names. The Canary Islands have often been cited as Atlantis, as have been the Madeira Islands. Other island groups include the Azores, as well as the submerged island of Spartel. Keep in mind that the island was to have sunk beneath the sea after an earthquake or tsunami. However, no technology has revealed such a city at the ocean bed. It is also believed that the first king of Atlantis, whose name was Atlas, built a massive temple with a giant statue to honor Poseidon. This has also been lost to history. Other theories suggest that Atlantis is in the Mediterranean, off the coast of Spain, and a few have even argued that it could be under Antarctica. Ignatius Donnelly, in his work Atlantis the Antediluvian World, took many liberties with his interpretation of the fabled city. Much of what is believed today about Atlantis comes from the works of Donnelly, not historians. The findings of Edgar Cayce had something different to tell. Cayce believed in the rising of the lost city once again. 
However, Casey predicted the new land would appear off the east coast of North America. Casey's prediction went on to further assert that the souls of many of the people who lived in Atlantis had been incarnated to America, thereby ushering in a new era of enlightened human consciousness. There is also an extraterrestrial connection to Atlantis. Stories claim that the original inhabitants to be from the Lyrian star system, and they founded the city some 50,000 years ago. These aliens were believed to be much taller and fairer than the average humans, and they also had a lifespan of 800 years. Essentially, they were believed to be superior beings, which is why Atlantis was so far ahead of the other cultures of the time. We can see that the tale of Atlantis has undergone many transformations from Plato's allegory. In fact, so many liberties have been taken, and some of the theories border on the ridiculous. Until a lost city is found and proven to be Atlantis, the tale remains as an allegory used by Plato to teach philosophy. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Traveler's Tales. If you enjoyed this video, please consider becoming a channel sponsor. Your support will enable us to continue creating quality videos, and buying me a coffee always makes my day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Traveler's Tales. This really is the best way to help our channel grow. Until we meet again at the crossroads of folklore and fact, Cartistos.